In this video, we're going to follow on from the previous noisy extruder video and look at using the X particles fall off to control modifiers using particles. Let's have a look at what we're going to build. So if we take a closer look, we've got the particles that are growing out of the surface and also getting color information in a radial pattern. And then another group of particles will control the scale and color going down again. And then they will blend together to create a new layer. So let's get started and work on how to build this system. First thing we're going to do is going to create our surface to emit our particles on. And we're just going to use a simple plane. Let's just show the wireframe. We're going to keep it at the default, make it editable, go to polygon mode and select all the polygons. We're going to hit I on the keyboard for inner extrude and turn off preserve groups. Extrude inner slightly. Hitting D on the keyboard, we're going to extrude down slightly. And then we're going to right click and choose normal scale. Normal scale is going to scale by the normals of these faces, so they all get the same scaling effect. Let's lift that up slightly so it's not so deep. And we want to make a selection set on all of these, so we're going to go to Select, Set Selection. We're going to use that to emit our particles on. The last thing we need to do is make a subdivision surface, and there you can see we've got our plane. And we're going to use a displacer to deform this. So holding down the plane, we're going to shift click and choose displacer. That places it down the hierarchy. We're going to go to shading and add a noise shader. Go to the noise shader and put this global scale to about 800% or whatever suits your needs. We're going to put the animation speed to 1. So if we push play, we've got our surface bubbling away. And you can go to the displacer and you can change how deep it is just by pulling up the handle. So we're going to go for something like that. Next thing we need to do is create our mesh that is going to be emitted. So I'm going to use a sphere. Go to our top view and we want our sphere to sit inside one of these circles so that the size is matching. So we can just put it in and just get a general idea of the size. That looks good. And then with our sphere, we need to make it editable. So you see on your keyboard, we need to scale it down on the Y axis. And we need to rotate so that the Z is pointing up. So we need to go into axis mode this key here, L on your keyboard, rotate 90 degrees so that it's facing upwards. And we can put this below the mesh and hide it and use it later. Okay, so let's start getting some particles in here. We're going to go to X particles, create a system, new emitter, and we're going to set emitter to object, and the object is our plane and we need to use the selection that we generated, so just drop the selection set in here. And then we're going to enable one particle per source element. In the emissions tab, we're going to set the emission mode to shot. And we're going to turn, turn the speed to zero. So that will create one particle per face that we've generated. We also in the emitter need to go back and enable stick particle to source object. That way our particles when the source object is animated will stick to that animated surface. Next thing we want to do is we want to generate our spheres. So we go to generators, create a generator object and drop our sphere in there. Make sure the generator is talking to our emitter. 
and we can go up a frame and see how that's looking. So you can see it's created the spheres, but if you push play, you might see that some of them start flipping around because they're not getting the right orientation. So we're going to go in and choose extended data, and we're going to set tangential on. And tangential is good, but it will flip until we turn off persist orientation. And that will keep the faces flat. Okay, so that's good. Now if you want this to be a bit faster while you're working, you can turn the clone type to create render instances and that will work until we need to start looking at the colors. So you can see the speed up. But when we work with color information, we'll need to turn it back to the proper clones. Okay, so now we want to look at scaling these guys up over time using a radial scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another emitter. Let's call this one base. So that's our base particles. We're going to create a new emitter and we're going to call this one up for scale up. When we go to the objects, we're going to change the emitter shape to a cylinder. And let's just go back to frame zero. Let's just scale this right down and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees like so and then scale it so it's very very small because this is the area we want our particles to come out from in a radial array so if we turn this one off and we push play you see it's emitting particles but we want them to emit from the ring only and we want them to emit as a shot. So it's just a shot of particles that come out. Okay, you can see that there. And we can turn that down to, let's say 200 for now. We might have to raise that, but we'll, we'll work on 200 for the moment. And instead of shot, we're actually gonna use pulse. So go to pulse. And we're going to have it pulse every four seconds. The one, and then it'll pulse again in four seconds' time. And they're going a bit slow, so I'm going to go back to the emissions and just set that back to the default. So let's get that a bit faster. That might be too fast. Find the speed that's going to work for you. Let's try 90. Bit too fast still. Let's try 70. Okay, that works. And we're going to slightly lift it up as well. And then we're going to give it a color. And the color can be whatever color you want the particles to turn to. So I'm going to use an orange to start with. <clears throat> so our particles will be an orange. Okay. Now we want these to be killed once they get bigger than the sphere, uh, this, the plane object. So we're going to go to our modifiers, control modifiers, and drop in a kill. And just scale the kill down so it matches the size of our scene. <laughs> so the radial particles, as soon as they get bigger than our plane, they're just going to die off. So we can hide that now. And then I'm going to create another one by control dragging and I'm going to call this one down I'm going to change the display to a pink or a blue let's go for blue just depends on what colors you want to change your generated particles into and we're going to go to the emissions I'm going to change the interval to 3. So we get these rings happening, concentric rings. At some stages these will blend together, and at other stages you'll get concentric ones. So that's good. So that's those done. Now we need to get some modifiers in to do some things with these. So let's go to generate modifiers, choose scale 
and we're going to change the scale to 0, 0, and 1. And we're going to go into the fall off, and we're going to choose shape, x particles, fall off. And that's going to give us a link for an emitter, and that's where we're going to put our up emitter in. So we call this one scale up. Let's enable our base emitter again. If we push play, you'll see that the radial array is going through and scaling up our particles. Now, they're not big enough yet, so let's go to our scale up, and let's change that to 5. Okay, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the axis of our sphere is actually at the bottom of the sphere, not sitting in the middle. So we're going to go into the sphere, go back to axis mode, make sure this is on the base so that our particle grows up from the bottom, not from the middle. That's all we need to do. Go back, enable that. That's better. So now you can see we're growing our particles up. And then what we want to do is our blue ring that comes through, we want to scale that back down. So we can control drag our scale up modifier, call this one down. Oops. And in the fall off, we're going to drop in our down emitter. And in the object settings, we're going to change it to minus one. Let's see how that looks. So we're going to scale up. And then the blue ones come to and scale it down. So we've got the rings happening, so we've got scaling up, scaling down. That's working pretty good. So I think we can go a bit smaller. Let's try the minus five so it's a complete opposite of the up. Just tweak them until you get the exact say size you want. Okay, that's better. Now if you want to see what's happening, if you go to your modifiers that are using the particle fall off and enable show radius, you'll see that the radius is a spherical radius around the particle and that's the actual fall off zone. So you can see we've got enough to escapulate all of the particles. If you don't have enough, you just increase the radius until you get exactly what you want. So push play, you can see <clears throat> it's driving through, scaling them up, and then the next one's going to drive through and scale them down and so forth. That's good. So I'll turn that radius display off now so we don't need to see it. You can hide these as well if you need to see exactly what's going on. So now we want to look at how to color these things based on the information that we're getting from these. So the way to do that is first we want a base color. Now in the preview our material is black and then they get the color from the particles. So let's work on that. So we're going to go for a black on our plane object and we want our emitter to emit black particles. So go to display and change that to a black. So if we push play now, you'll see it's created the black. But what we want to do is start getting some color. So we're going to go to modifiers and we're going to use control modifiers color. And the first color is the orange. And that's going to use the same fall off. So you go to X particles fall off and drop the up particle in there. Right, this is where it comes down to the fact that we're using instances and instances can't show any color information. So with our generator, make sure that your clone type goes back to straight clones. And now you can see we're going to get the actual color. It will slow down. But you'll see the colors happening in the viewport. 
Okay, so now we want the scaled down colors to happen as well. So we're going to copy this one, we'll call it up. And control drag that. Color down. And that one's going to be the blue. Go to map uh, fall off and then drop in the down emitter. Just push play. So you can see they're going blue now on the down and then back to red. So that's working exactly how we want it to. Now when it comes to rendering, you can render these guys with the viewport, but then you're not going to get any uh, the ability to add any effects on top such as uh, reflections. And if we drop any old material on our generator, it's going to override what we've done. So what you need to do with the material is choose texture and we're going to go to MoGraph and we're going to use the MoGraph color shader. And the color shader is going to get the color information from the particles and that means you can now render it again with all that information but also the ability to do whatever you want. So we can drop in some luminance. So copy the color shader again to so get some nice luminance in there. Scale that down a little bit, and you can add reflections. So we can add a GGX, a bit of roughness, and some for now fall off. And that gives you the ability to have a bit deeper control over the look of the particles that you're going to render. And then put some lights and reflection maps, and then you can really go deep with how it's going to look and feel. <clears throat> now this isn't particularly limited to a radial array on a plane. You can take it further and use it on an object as well. Here's a setup we've done previously using a torus and rather than having the particles go in an array, we're going to have the particles emit from the torus and use a follow surface. So the particles are going to flow around the surface and whenever they hit one, they'll scale it up or scale it down. So let's have a look. So you can see it's doing the same thing. You're getting the color information, you're getting the growth and the scale down effects all on top of any surface that you want. So it gives you just a bit deeper control. And both of these files will be available in the video manual for you to play with. So let's have a last look at the effect.